Sup nerds, I'm Kappa Joey and welcome back to another episode of Hobby Drama. And today we're going to be having a look at fandom that I didn't even know existed until I discovered this story. We're going to be having a look at Warrior Cats. Warrior Cats is a fandom that has been going for over 10 years with all of the classic stuff that you would expect from dramatic fandoms. Emotional fan art, shipping wars, you know, all of that stuff. So if, like me, you never heard of Warrior Cats until you discovered this story, then put your feet up and get ready to sink your teeth into some lesser-known drama. And if you have heard of Warrior Cats, well, I hope you enjoy and that I haven't offended you by talking about this too much. So without any further ado, we're going to be having a look at fandom obsession with a feline incel. I just wanted to give a huge thank you to you slash Jupex be great on Reddit for writing up this whole story regarding Warrior Cats. Like I've said quite a few times now, I wouldn't have known that it even existed had it not been for this story, so a huge thank you for them for taking the time and effort to write this up, but also for giving me permission to read it out on my channel. It's much appreciated. Warrior Cats, how a decade of teen obsession with an incel created a thrilling horror mystery plot. Introduction. Most people floating around the fandom areas of the internet have probably heard of Warrior Cats. This past post about some of the franchise's drama does a fantastic job of explaining how the series and its fandom work, but I'll provide another summary for those of you who don't enjoy clicking links. With that poster OP provided here, I do plan on actually reading that out in a separate episode because it is really interesting. The only issue is, is that the writer is pretty uncontactable. So I always like to ask permission before covering something like this, but I might just end up uploading it and then taking it down if any, you know, issues arise from it. Warrior Cats, or simply Warriors depending on where you live, is a nearly two decades old children's fantasy series about clans of dozens of wild cats who live according to a code of honour. Originally just a single six book plot, its success spawned countless sequels, prequels, and standalone stories. There are over 80 books in the series now, including six full main story arcs of six books each, and they're not slowing down anytime soon, with five more books releasing just this year and the seventh arc currently underway. The series was created by author Victoria Holmes, while the books themselves are ghostwritten by two other authors, all collectively sold under the pen name Erin Hunter. Plots in these books typically revolve around bloody battles between the different clans, mystical prophecies received from the spirits of cats who have died, known as Star Clan, and of course, mountains upon mountains of romantic drama and love triangles. To quote the other posts, are the books any good? Well, no, but that's irrelevant. Some of them are quite good, but most are mediocre at best. And in any case, it's not the books per se that draw in legions of 12 year old fans, the world Warriors created has generated a massive online fandom of kids, teens, and young adults earnestly designing their own cats and entire fan-made clans for the sake of fanfiction, roleplay, fan art, and more. Ashfur, The Origin In 2007, while writing the draft for Warriors' third main story arc, Vicky Holmes had one thing in mind, Ashfur. This third arc, titled Power of Three, was about a trio of cats, siblings, who each possessed a superpower that they were destined to use to save the clans. But that was only window dressing for Vicky's true goal. It was no secret that she had a fondness, shall we say, for tragic scenes dripping with drama, and she'd had one of these in mind ever since the beginning to brainstorm P.O.T.'s plot. A mother's children are threatened, and the only way she could save them is to reveal the shocking truth. They are not hers. From this one kernel of drama came everything else. And so, Power of Three, a story about young cats with superpowers, was entirely structured around a scene unrelated to that idea. At the end of Book 5, a fire breaks out in the forest and our three heroes are trapped by the flames. Their mother, Squirrel Flight, tries to clear a path for them to escape, but her way is blocked by Ashfur. A cat who was a rival for her romantic affections in the previous story arc in which Squirrel Flight was a main character before she chose her fellow protagonist Brambleclaw as her mate. The scene that follows is widely considered the most recognisable and iconic moment in Warrior Cats, featured in countless pieces of fan art and animated videos. 
Surrounded by the fire, his eyes aglow with hatred and madness, Ashfur raves about how he's never forgiven Squirrel Flight for being faithless to him. In a speech rivaling General Hux from The Force Awakens for its intensity and anger, he echoes insults worldwide and recounts just how badly he's been wronged because this woman would to go on a date with him. He utters the infamous line, Upset? I'm not upset. You have no idea how much pain I'm in. It's like being cut open every day, bleeding onto the stones. I can't understand how any of you failed to see the blood. He even reveals that he secretly helped the villain of the previous arc attempt to murder Squirrel Flight's father, just as he's now going to let her children burn to death, all to get revenge for being turned down. I've already spoiled what happens next. Squirrel Flight, to save the protagonist's lives, reveals to Ashford that they are not, in fact, her children. Her motherhood was a deception, and not even Brambleclaw knows that he is not their father. She does not tell Ashford who their true parents are, but what she's already said is enough. Ashford now has a new path for his revenge. He's going to publicly reveal to all the clans that Squirrel Flight lied, destroying her standing and humiliating her. It is eventually revealed in the sixth and final book of Power of Three that the trio's true mother was Squirrel Flight's sister Leafpool, who, as a clan medicine cat, essentially a faith doctor, was forbidden to bear children, hence the lie. Ashfur is killed by one of the protagonists, but the full details of the secret are still revealed to all the clans, shaming both Squirrel Flight and Leafpool. We can now skip ahead to book four of the following story arc. One of our protagonist's sisters visits Star Clan, the Cat Heaven, in a vision and notices Ashfur present among them. Shocked, they ask another Star Clan cat, a wise mentor figure, why Ashfur was allowed into Star Clan instead of being sent to the Dark Forest, the Cat Hell, for his crimes and attempted murders. Serenely, speaking with Vicky Holmes' full intent, the mentor figure replies, His only crime was to love too much. Ashfur, the fandom. It is impossible to overstate just how big of a deal Ashfur became in the Warriors fandom for years to come. Now, naturally, in a series with hundreds of named characters and plenty of other drama filled stories to go around, the fandom had lots of things to talk about. But Ashfur was constantly near the top of the list. It'll come as no surprise to anyone who spent time in a fandom with lots of young teenagers that there was a large movement viewing Ashfur as. misunderstood. He became practically idolised by lots of young fans, particularly young female fans, as a symbol of romantic tragedy. Contrasting this with fans who, rightfully, wonder what the hell Vicky was thinking when she wrote that line about loving too much and pointed out that Ashfur was both a misogynist and a murderer, etc, etc, etc. The Ashfur Wars raged for years across every fandom platform, Tumblr, YouTube, forum boards, spurred on in large part by two factors. The first is easy. Kids don't really have a good perspective of what a healthy relationship looks like. Trying to murder a woman's children because you want her that badly can seem beautiful in a twisted way, and it helps when the books themselves end up confirming this interpretation for you. The second factor is a phenomenon that affects nearly every aspect of the Warriors fandom. A lot of fans don't really read the books. Remember, the books themselves aren't the draw, it's the world that is the draw. Kids want to make their own unique cats with names like Darkness Stallon and, Fer and Fury Scythe. Those names definitely wouldn't fit into the world of books if it's unclear. They don't care what happened in some new book released this year. For a lot of people, the world of Warriors is a purely creative one, and a lot of kids actually found their way into the fandom solely through fan content without ever touching an actual book. So when your whole knowledge of Ashfur is based on fan animation videos that show off the tears in his eyes as he pleaded with Squirrel Flight to love him back, you get the picture. Working Partners Around 2013, following the conclusion of the fourth arc, Vicky Holmes passed on her torch. Though she still retains some involvement with the series, the book's plots are now created by a team of writers called Working Partners, while still being ghostwritten by the same two authors from before. Working Partners' involvement with the fifth arc onwards has produced a number of changes in the writing and decisions made about how to handle characters, some negative, some positive. This brings us to the seventh and current story arc, The Broken Code, which began releasing in spring 2019. 
In writing this arc, the new team, by all appearances, took note of a number of common fan complaints about the series that had existed for years. This included a number of questions about the series status quo that the books themselves typically ignore, such as why do the cats arbitrarily segregate themselves into different clans when they all have the same culture and almost always have to unite to fend off the outside threats? Why aren't medicine cats allowed to have children? That's a stupid and unnecessary rule. Or, why do none of the characters seem to notice or care that their leaders always promote their relatives to positions of power? That last one, of course, is because characters in positions of power are almost always protagonists, and protagonists usually end up being relatives of other protagonists. Every indication from the Broken Code so far is that questions like this will be addressed in the series itself, possibly ending with lasting systemic change for the clans. Even more than any of those questions, the new team became aware of one particular fan complaint, Ashfur. By now, the Warriors fandom had been around long enough to be somewhat more mature. Though Ashfur stands still existed, the general consensus was totally aware that he was an outright villain who was in no way a dreamy, misunderstood boyfriend. And so the time came that working partners in planning out the Broken Code had a brilliant idea. Make Ashfur the villain. Bring him back as a sinister big bad for the seventh arc and satisfy the fandom by showing once and for all that he is not some relatable, love-struck sad boy. More than that, retcon his placement in StarClan as a trick all along. Ashfer lied his way into heaven and has been plotting his revenge ever since. But wait, isn't he dead? You ask confused. Yes, but this is Warrior Cats, and death is kinda irrelevant. The entire plot of the fourth arc was about evil dead cats returning to fight a final battle and getting killed again, this time for good. If the new team could come up with a convincing way to make Ashfur insert himself back into the plot as a spirit, there would be nothing stopping them from reusing him. This would have made shockwaves among fandom no matter what, but the discourse was set into motion even before the release of the Broken Code's first book. Kate Carey, one of the series' two ghostwriters, confirmed on her blog that a controversial character would be returning for Arc 7. She gave no details beyond that, but most fans assumed this meant a villain and speculation began. Could it be this character? Or this one? Or what about this other one? And Ashfur's name, of course, came up a lot. Then the rumour started. Ashfur. Leaked into the fandom from an unknown source came the whispers that it was Ashfur. It was Ashfur big time. Ashfur, the rumour said, was going to possess and take over the body of a living character and wreak havoc. Plenty of people believed that. Plenty of other people likewise dismissed it. The writers would never do something like that. Yeah. The Broken Code. The first book of The Broken Code released in April 2019 and kicks things off with a bang. StarClan has gone totally silent for unknown reasons and isn't communicating prophecies and wisdom to the living cats like they normally do. Over the course of the book, one of our new cat protagonists is spoken to by a mysterious unseen spirit. You see, Squirrel Flight's mate Brambleclaw, now the leader of his clan and named Bramblestar, is ill, and this spirit knows how to cure him. Acting on its instructions, the protagonist convinces all the cats to bury Bramblestar in snow to bring his fever down. He dies. Then he comes back to life! All the characters cheer. Bramblestar shakily gets up, looks around, then walks over to Squirrel Flight. Greetings, he says in a deep voice. It's good to be with you again. Heh. <laughs> the book ends with another one of the protagonists on a walk through a totally different part of the forest when he suddenly encounters... Bramblestar? But it's a ghost. The ghost Bramblestar runs towards him, yelling, Help! Please help! The protagonist flees in terror. The atmosphere of the scene is excitingly horror-esque in a way that no warrior's book before has been. Things only escalate in books 2 and 3, with each passing book amping up both the intense ominous feeling of the story and the chilling menace of the living Bramblestar's actions. In book 2, Bramblestar spends all his time with Squirrel Flight, creepily fawning over her and insisting she approve all her actions with him. At the same time, he uses his position as the respected leader of a clan to push for aggressive punishment for cats who commit minor infractions. He argues that he knows why Star Clan has gone silent. It's because the clans aren't obeying their code strictly enough. In Book 3, he pushes the other clans to join him in a war against the cats that refuse to bow down to his new regime, a war that ends near Book 3 conclusion with him beaten and captured by the heroes and their allies. 
As this goes on, the fandom starts to realise something. The imposter pretending to be Bramble Star is an incredible villain. His writing hits notes of darkly intimidating behaviour rarely seen in this mediocre kid series, whether it's publicly threatening other cats for disobeying him, trying to murder a protagonist in the dark of night, or even, in one scene, privately gloating to one of the protagonists about how successful his plan to fool everyone has been. And all of this contrasts beautifully with the other side of his personality that emerges whenever Squirrel Flight's name comes up. An obsessive, unhealthy, pathetic interest in her. He makes dumb mistakes and is easily tricked whenever another character leads him to believe he might get to spend more time with her. He drops everything and forgets all his other priorities if she's involved. He's a simp, and the two styles of behaviour blend perfectly in the scenes where his true personality comes out. When Squirrel Flight begins to push him away, knowing that something is wrong, he becomes violent and brutal, verbally abusing her and at one point bodily throwing her off a small ledge. It's a thorough, shockingly cold and real portrayal of a man obsessed with owning a woman, in a children's fantasy book about anthropomorphized cats. Of course, most of the fandom knew it was Ashfur. The rumours and leaks helped, but even from the first book of the arc it was obvious. His main goal being, HAVE SEX WITH SQUIRREL FLAT is more than enough to prove that, but there were other hints too. In book one, a protagonist has a vision of the cat's territory suddenly being set aflame and flakes of ash falling into his fur. Yes, the book uses those words. In book two, the imposter references specific past events that Ashfur would be overly concerned with and is clueless as to significant events that happened shortly after Ashfur's death. In book three, the scene where the horror vibe peaks, the imposter spirit emerges temporarily from Bramblestar's body and menacingly threatens the protagonist. And though its appearance is smoky and indistinct, the protagonist can see its eyes are a bright blue, just like Ashfur's. The book, which released earlier this year, ends with the imposter captured and Squirrel Flight about to announce to all the cats that she believes she knows who he really is. But by that time, the cover of book 5 had already been revealed. This is the cover. And this is the official artwork of Ashfur. Ashfur, the fandom, Redux. I hope you all anticipated this last part because our story wouldn't be complete without it. Despite all the hints above and more I didn't mention, the fandom, as always, had die-hard holdouts who refused to believe it was Ashfur at all costs. Thus did the last 1.5 years of the fan community become a strange rebirth of Ashfur Wars with many of the same elements of the original ones. Because, you see, one of the chief arguments the Ashfur deniers used was Ashfur would never do these things. He would never try and murder other cats. He would never wreak havoc and turn the clans against themselves. He would never hurt Squirrel Flight like that. I assume I don't need to provide counter arguments. Other arguments came from a variety of places. Some fans, as always, clearly had no idea what was actually going on in the current books and were arguing from a place of ignorance. Some latched onto theories that the imposter was instead whoever their personal favourite villain was. Some argued that while Ashfur was even a murderess, he would never take the actions that the imposter had and try to manipulate all of the clans. Because he only cared about squirrel flight. These people were essentially in denial, since anyone who follows the news knows that men can do absolutely horrific things to unrelated people when acting on anger about being rejected. At one point, I encountered a post suggesting that Mothwing, a still-living female, non-blue-eyed atheist, was the imposter and that all the Ashfur theories were ignoring the obvious truth. Though, it was probably a troll. Even when the Book 5 cover was revealed, the holdouts for the most part insisted there was no proof that the cat on the cover was Ashfur and not another cat with a similar appearance. And when all else failed, they had one argument they could always fall back on. It doesn't matter whether it is Ashfur, it matters whether it should be Ashfur. Ashfur coming back as a villain, they argued, would be a stupid twist. It would ruin the story and there was no hope of the books being good if it really was him. Massive positive fan response to the Broken Code and adoration for its new characters tended to disagree. The reveal. And now we come to the close. With book 3 having ended on a cliffhanger like that, most fans eagerly began to wait for the release of book 4 this November. While it seemed like Squirrel Flight was seconds away from saying Ashfur's name, most fans were hesitant to assume that it would happen. After all, this is Warriors, a series famous for its meandering plot and refusal to let characters actually figure out the mysteries before the last book of an arc. 
Everyone prepared to be disappointed when they opened book four and found Squirrel Flight saying, I know who the imposter is, but I can't tell you yet. Nope. A couple of weeks ago, a small preview of the book was released online. In chapter one, Squirrel Flight says, it's Ashfur. In chapter two, the characters trick Ashfur into saying, yes, I am Ashfur to Squirrel Flight. Complete with two fantastic villain monologues, one where he talks about his lust for her, and one where he rages at the other characters that he still has more plans and they haven't beaten him yet. With any luck, the remaining three books of the arc are going to be fantastic, and all because Teen Girls in 2010 had the hots for an angsty murdering incel whose only crime was to love too much. Too Long Did a Read, Woman Writes Children's Fantasy Cat Books Where the Man Tries to Burn a Woman's Children Alive Because She Wouldn't Go Out With Him. Online fandom argues for years over whether he was actually evil or just a sexy misunderstood bad boy. New writing team takes over cat books a decade later, sees online controversy, and decides to bring the character back as a villain again, leading to fantastic books with a chilling villain scenes and transforming the incel into one of the best written characters in the series. I'm just going to be totally upfront here and say that I had never actually heard of Warrior Cats <laughs> at all until I read this post. Which I I'm actually quite surprised about because I have been in fandom parts of the internet ever since, you know, I had my old AOL dial-up modem back in like the early 2000s. I have done a little research since reading this original story and, you know, before doing, you know, recording this video and I have to say I'm actually really surprised that I didn't come across it before because it is huge. Like, there's so much fan art and all sorts. Now, about Ashfa, oh boy, okay, so I know that I haven't read the original story and to be fair, I don't think I need to. Because I think the fact that Ashfa tried to kill Squirrel Flight's children, you know, killed someone else as well. Just because he wanted to be with her. You, you know, these are all extremely damaging, you know, views of what a, rela of a romantic relationship is or should be. Now, there is a huge amount of damage that can be done when they are romanticising what is extremely abusive relationships. And I know that people are thinking, oh, these are just cats, you know, this is just a story about cats, why are people getting so, you know, caught up over it? And there's a reason why The Lion King makes us cry, you know, now the thing is, is that The Lion King is based on Hamlet, we are supposed to relate to the stories, and those are anthropomorphic, well, not anthropomorphic, but they're animals, you know. Actually, though, I think that the warrior cats are very much just cats that can speak and fight and have clans or that but you know i'm getting off point here when that kind of i love you so much i can't keep away from you kind of thing is seen as romantic then that will relate to how the people that are consuming this media are going to relate to their real life relationships if you are being told that you know having your children nearly burned to death was just because somebody loved you too much and not because they for some reason felt entitled to you you know, that's not love and it should definitely never be considered love. So that whole line at the end, after everything, it was really bad. Oh, I just saw that Vicky Holmes, the original writer of uh, Warrior Cats, um, has the same birthday as me. Yay. Oh, God, she's British too. Oh, what a day. What a day to be ashamed of who I <laughs> oh, my country. I do think the whole concept of having these, you know, cats that, you know, fight each other and have these different, you know, clans and groups and all of that, I do think that that's interesting. And I think that there is definitely a lot that could be expanded on. That's the thing with animals is that, um, you know, a lot of kids and humans, let's be real, we got beast stars, we got the furry fandom, we got all sorts. So many people love seeing animals humanized and being able to relate to a fluffy cat as opposed to just a generic guy. So if you have these, you know, tweens and teens consuming this story about these cats and, you know, getting into the fandom, getting into the fan art, all of that, and then when they then go on to have their own relationships, if they end up having that same behaviour, that same obsessive, I just love you so much kind of behaviour, they may well see that as just something, you know, just somebody loving them way too much. Now, it should be noticed that a lot of the time, teenagers might not actually want to listen to this stuff. You tell them something that, you know, is going to help them and they, will, they just want to live in their sad, you know, their sad, cute catboy fantasy, which if that's the case, you know, you just got to wait for them to grow up.
But it was really irresponsible of the author to be writing that in a story intended for, like, children and young adults. That is really, really concerning. But I think, for, from the sounds of it, the way that the story's actually going, and this whole, like, big bad with, you know, with Ashfur acting like a dictator, that sounds really cool. Like, legit, it's, it's not just saying, look, if somebody's going to be emotionally, you know, abusive to you, how are they going to be abusive in other ways? I think that that's actually quite cool. The way that they went about it is is really well done, and unfortunately, when it comes to shipping and shipping laws, there's very little you can do. Already while looking at this, I saw so many things like, what if Squirrel Flight chose Ashfur instead of Brambleclaw? And it's like, what? leave Brambleclaw alone. What did he do apart from get possessed by Ashfur? Which, you know, was Ashfur's fault. I'm actually getting quite into this. <laughs> I'm actually wanting to know all the stories now. Like I said, there is another story about Warrior Cats that the OP of this post links to. Like I said, I've not been able to get permission from the author to read that out. Not because they, they've said no, because, you know, sometimes people say no and that's fine and I just won't cover it, but because it's actually just impossible to contact them. They've dropped off the face of the earth and I really want to cover it. That's the thing. So I'm tempted to just cover it and then if they come up and say, you know, don't, then I'll remove it. But it's, it's kind of tricky when it seems to have just been abandoned, you know, maybe it was a throwaway. I can't tell. Either way, let me know if you would like to hear more from Warrior Cats, because it seems that there is a hell of a lot of drama to just, you know, work through. As is the case with any kind of angsty thing with several love triangles and teenagers that are into it, you know. Love stories put on the heartstrings of adolescence. I was majorly into all of the love triangles and, you know, romantic crap when I was a teenager, even though I consider myself very much on the asexual way romantic spectrum i'm not really interested in any of it like i don't like the stories at all now but i used to be into it just because i was a hormonal teenager so i don't know overall i've i've just found this to be like a really interesting rabbit hole i mean more of a cat hole i don't know but this has been a really interesting rabbit hole i would love to look into warrior cats more in the future if you're a fan of warrior cats and you have come across this then please do let me know what you think about this whole ashford controversy let me know where you think the fandom stands, because of course this is just one person's recollection who happens to be in the fandom. You may disagree, you may think that they've got the, you know, nail on the head. So I would love to, you know, hear from what other people think. But overall, I think that this just speaks volumes as to the damage that can be done by writing poor romantic relationships. And especially if you're trying to, you know, show them as healthy, you cannot... You cannot write a domestic abusive relationship and then try and say, no, no, it's actually healthy. You just don't understand. You know, it doesn't work that way. So the fact that they actually took this controversy on board, you know, the new writers and changed that, I think it's quite cool. I think the story may be going into, you know, a new route. Like I said, I haven't really read any of these. I don't know the stories, but the Broken Code sounds pretty cool. Anyway, whether you're in the fandom or not, do let me know in the comments. If you do mention whether or not you're in the fandom so I can kind of gauge what kind of knowledge you've got, then that would be absolutely brilliant. And for now, I think we can shut the book on this episode of Warrior Cats. I may return to Warrior Cats in the future. Let me know if you want to hear more from them. Well, that brings this episode of Hobby Drama to a close. Like I said before, I may well be covering Warrior Cats again because there is so much to work with. So if you'd be interested in hearing more from Warrior Cats, do let me know in the comments. If you have any hobby drama that you would like read out that isn't on Reddit or you don't have a Reddit account, then feel free to send me an email. My email is super easy to find on my channel. Or if you think that there's any other kind of fandom drama that you haven't seen covered and would like to see it covered, then do let me know as well. And until the next episode, I'll see you all next time.